Praise the Lord, everybody. We're so glad that you're here with us today. Uh, here we are on night number three. It's been an amazing study. And before we begin, I just want to talk about what's going on in the Middle East uh, between Israel and Hamas. You know, our hearts go out to all the people that are affected by the war that's going on at this moment. And it is a tragedy on both sides. That's people right. are dying People are suffering, and we must pray for these people caught up in the crossfires of a senseless war between Israel and Hamas. Now, what, regardless of what you believe in or who you believe is right or who you believe is wrong, we just need to make sure that we're praying because the times are getting crazier and crazier. You know, uh, we heard all about wars and rumors of wars. A at this moment, there's a war between Ukraine and Russia, and now we're hearing about this war between Israel and Hamas. You know, as a child, we heard all about, you know, uh, God is coming soon when you see these signs, and some of these signs are wars and rumors of wars. Other signs include pestilence and disease, and we just had a worldwide disease that just happened, and there are earthquakes and other tribulations that are happening in this world. You know, uh, the thing with the mark of the beast is that with this mark, or, or without this mark rather, you can't buy and you can't sell That's anything. Right. So right. back then, around, around the time of like Y2K, the technology wasn't out there, but now the technology is available for them to do certain things just like that, where you won't be able to buy or sell without a mark. Now, I'm not trying to scare anybody into, you know, oh, uh, uh, the mark is coming, the mark is coming, you need to be baptized, you need to be saved. No, you need to be baptized, you need to be saved because Jesus loves you and he wants to redeem you, right. which has uh, uh, been the, the, the title for the sermon on uh, yesterday, which was Jesus, our Redeemer, part one. But we need to stay in prayer for our brothers and sisters, and we need to reach out and love one another because that's what God wants us to do. You know, uh, we'll start with a word of prayer. And uh, Eugenie, would you pray for us, please? Certainly. Dear Heavenly Father, we want to thank you for life. Sometimes we take it for granted. First and foremost, we ask that you forgive us for our sins. Guide us and protect us, Lord. Though we may stray away, but yet you still hold our hands. Yes, Lord. And for that, we give you all the glory and honor that you deserve. Please be with everyone around the world who are suffering, world hunger, who are um, in a fight right now, Lord. We ask that you send your angels right now and you hold on, hold on to them and let them know that you are coming soon Amen. to give them strength and hope yes, that Lord. there is hope for tomorrow. Yes, for that, Lord, we give you all the honor, all the glory that you deserve. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Amen, amen, amen. amen. We want to welcome you to our third night of the uh, revival and uh, please what is the title of the revival everybody it's all about Jesus oh come on let me hear you let me hear you in the house it's all about Jesus, that's right. that's right, that's right. You know, we've been having a great time in this uh, revival. We've been talking about so many great things. On night number one, uh, Pastor spoke about Jesus, our creator, yes. part one. Night number two was Jesus, our creator, part two. Last night, which was night number three, we spoke about Jesus, our redeemer, part one. Eugenie, what do you think uh, tonight's going to be about? I'm, I'm just ready for it. You just ready for it? Yeah. Yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know about you. I'm going to guess. I'm going to go on a limb and say tonight's title is going to be Jesus, Our Redeemer, Part 2. I, I don't know. It might be Part 2. It, it might be another title, but we're going to take Part 2. We're going to see. Yeah. We're going to see. You know, one of the texts that he brought out uh, was a really interesting text about Adam and Eve and how uh, they ate the forbidden fruit. Now, when you think about it, when, when the devil came to Eve, and he singled out this one fruit. We know that they had access to every tree mm -hmm. in the garden. But God said, do not touch this tree. Now, what comes to my mind is that they had an abundance. Mm. They were surrounded by abundance. And they decided to touch the thing that they were not supposed to touch. Okay. So many times... We're surrounded by abundance, especially here in the United States. We have so many things, but a lot of times we focus on the things that we don't have. Mm -hmm. And it's crazy when you think about it because, you know, if you don't have a car, 
if you don't have, you know, a nice big fancy house, you know, if you don't have nice uh, expensive fancy clothes, you think that you don't have the things that you need to have. But the reality is that God gives us everything that we need. The Bible tells us that our God will supply yeah. all of our needs. Amen. You know, Amen. and so we need to be mindful that we serve a great God. And he is not only our creator, but he's also our redeemer. Awesome. Amen. Yes. Amen. You know, uh, last night he had a test question. And I want to give an answer to a test question. Is that okay? Go ahead. Go ahead. Let's go. All right. So the question was, what does it mean to be redeemed? Does anybody know? Can anybody say what, what, what does it mean to be redeemed? Because pastor said it was a test question. All right, if nobody knows, I'll give you guys the answer. I'm not even going to charge you for write it. Write it down. All right, make sure you write it down because we're going to be playing cahoots soon. And when we do play cahoots, I want you guys to get this answer right. So what does it mean to be redeemed? Buy, to buy, buy back. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. We have somebody here in the studio that knew exactly what the answer was. And the answer to uh, the definition of being redeemed is to be bought back. Amen. And Jesus bought us back with a heavy price. Amen? Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. It's you know, uh, yeah, go ahead. It's something about the sermon yesterday when he spoke about the lamb, mm. about how we, how they used to have to, they had to use, sacrifice the lamb right. and take the blood. Imagine if Jesus didn't die for us. Uh -huh. How many lamb would we have on our land right now? Oh, my goodness. With the inflation, would a lamb cost 20000 <laughs> How many sin will you do per day right. before you go sacrifice? Have tomorrow mercy. is not promised. That's right. You know, so it, it waking up, and I think Jesus for dying on that cross Amen. for me Amen. so that I... Don't have to sacrifice a lamb because I'm scared to kill right, an animal. Right. But I don't mind cooking it. <laughs> you know, I'm thinking about like they would have to have like a lamb coat. You know how to have Costco? Yeah, yeah. They would have like lamb, lamb coat, coat where yep. you have to go and buy the lamb. But you know, everything is going to be inflated. Mm -hmm. The price is going to be super high to buy a lamb. Yep. But thank God for Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. He paid the price for us. And look, how much did it cost? $3.99. Free 99. We didn't have to pay a thing. Jesus came and died on the cross. The Bible tells us that for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him Shall should not, not perish but, but have, have everlasting, everlasting life. life. Amen. 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 Uh, you know, uh, we were talking about uh, a creation the other day. And when I think about creation, God made man in a way that was different from everybody else. In Genesis chapter 2, it tells us that he formed man from the dirt. And not only did he form man from the dirt, but he also breathed life into man. Now, this gives me an idea about how special we are. Now, I don't want to get ahead of myself and get like big headed, but God loves you a lot. And there's a reason for that. We were formed from the dust and we have the breath of God in our nostrils. Those are two things that I want us to take a look at. Genesis 1 verse 1 tells us that in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Now, let's pay attention to this, right? The heaven and the earth. The heaven and the earth. We are man. We are made from the dust. Mm -hmm. And the dust is in the earth, mm -hmm. right? right? God breathed his breath in our nostrils, which means... The spirit that we have in us, mm -hmm. flowing through us, mm -hmm. comes from the heaven. That's right. Amen. And so we are a composite of God's entire creation built in one, which means you're not just like an animal that was created from, you know, God spoken into existence. God took his time to create man. Yeah. And it's an incredible creation that we are, that God took his time not only to form us from the dust, but to also give us the breath of life in our lungs. Yeah. And that's why we are so valuable to him. You know, speaking of that, when I was a kid, and I used to go in the shower, I used to take a little rag, uh -huh. and I see a whole lot of dirt. Uh -huh. I say, God, when you was making me, <laughs> you think you put too much dust on me? <laughs> you know, growing up like that, and I was like, oh my God, this right. is incredible right. to see how we were made from God image. I think we all can get a little crusty and dusty sometimes, <laughs> ain't that right? Physically and spiritually. If somebody can testify. <laughs> Listen, I'm so glad uh, for this revival, this revival talking about Jesus, because if not, for today, if not now, 
You know, people need the Lord now more than ever before. Mm -hmm. And it is our responsibility to share the gospel with everybody so that they can know who Jesus is. So this revival talking about it's all about Jesus is crucial. And we need to make sure that we are sharing Jesus with everyone that we know. So we had our acronym of friends. I'm not going to go spend too much time with it. But we had the F for the forgotten, the R for the relatives, the I for the injured, the E for the employees and the coworkers, the N for your neighbors the D for the doubters, and the S for someone new. So let's make sure that we're going out, reaching out, and talking to friends so that we can make an impact on this world and telling them who Jesus is. Amen. 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 You know, soon we're going to play the game Cahoots again. We have some great prizes that we're going to share. Uh, but before we go and give some prizes, uh, I think we should go over some quick announcements real quick. So tech team, if you guys can put some of the announcements on the screen so that everybody can see them because we want to share some of these great announcements. Awesome. All right. You know, I think I'm going to run to the sanctuary. I'm going to run out of the studio real quick because I got something special for everybody. Awesome. For those of you who... For those of you who need uh, translation, we do have um, people to translate in Spanish and in Creole. So sit if you need anything, ask the, uh, please see registration table in the lobby and they will go ahead and assist you. Also, there are also ways to connect for baptismal, baptism, prayer, Bible study, or to become a member. You can text Word connect to 954 696 4622 or 786 457 9806. You can also text the keyword to connect on the chat. Also, if you want to, you can email us connect to newgen2019 tech at gmail.com. Also, you can also scan us on scan the QR code and fill out the information once you get in there. For those of you um, who would like to give to New Generation, there's three easy ways to give. You could download our app in Google Play or App Store, search Advantage Giving, select New Generation SDA of North Miami. Also, you can come in person at church every night from 6 p.m. to 9 p.m. And if you're unable to, you can mail it to 12800 North Miami Ave, Miami, Florida, 33168. Okay, you guys, to play, learn, and grow. For those of you who would like to bring your kids throughout the crusade, this is the right place to play, learn, and grow for your children. Loving and care staff, spacious learning class, nutritious meal, safe learning material. The time at 7.30 p.m. to 9 p.m. Yes, there is no excuses. You can call for more information, Asha at 786-617-5926. She is the children director. All parents must register the child or children. It is mandatory so, okay? If you are in need of transportation and you have no way of coming here, go ahead and contact us because we have transportation available. For more information, you can call 786-797-1313. Once again, the number is 786-797-1313. Please call before 3 p.m. Eastern time. You can also subscribe on YouTube also visit our website at New Generation SDA Church. You can also visit us, visit, visit us on Instagram at New Generation SDA North Miami. Like us on Facebook at New Generation SDA Church of North Miami. Also, reminder, no revival service on Thursday. No revival services on Thursday. Please register assist you. Thank you. Now, back to Dada. All right, everybody. Listen, I need, I need some energy in the room. So before I start, everybody, come on, put your hands together. Come on, clap your hands. Come on, clap your hands. Clap your hands. Tuesday, Tuesday, if you guys didn't know, Tuesday is gift night. We are giving gifts 
for no reason at all, all right? So if you want a gift, we have some great gifts that we're going to be sharing tonight. So before I start, before I start with any of the gifts, I need everybody to put their uh, address on your GPS because I got a special gift for somebody. So put your address on your GPS and go the distance from the church to your house, okay? All right, so here we go. To start us off, I got this, uh, the Powerful Plate. This book is all about how to fight cancer one meal at a time. So I'm going to be giving away four of these books. So first, I just want to see a hand in the air that wants the book. You want the book? Okay, I see, I see this hand. This was the first hand in the air. All right, I already gave an answer earlier. Here's for another book. All right, now, the question is, what was the title of night number one? Come on. Go ahead. What was night number one? Jesus, our creator. All right, Jesus, our creator. There we go. There we go. Oh, come on. Y'all show some love. Y'all show some love. Here we go. All right. This is another book. It says, Fighting Disease with Food. Actually, I think I'm going to keep this one. And I, I'll give it, I'll give it out, I'll give it out. Okay, what was, oh, you already, I, I didn't even ask the question yet. What's nine times 1,736? You see, you got to wait till, I'm tripping, I'm messing with you. All right, what, what was the title of last night's sermon? And what? You were busy? Oh my goodness, I need an answer. What was the, what was the title of last night's sermon? I see, a, you put your hand like halfway up. You're not ready yet? Okay, last night's sermon, the title was? Our Redeemer. Jesus, Jesus, our Redeemer. Can you tell me what part? Part one. Of course we're paying attention. There we go. That's what I'm talking about. Come on, show some love, everybody. Okay, I need someone who is under the age of 16. I shouldn't say that because I, I think a lot of people are going to raise their hands. Someone, see, I knew it. <laughs> someone under the age of 16. Oh, please. All right, here you go. This is a water bottle, and on this water bottle, it says it's all about Jesus. All right, there you go. There you go. I need someone who's over 42 years old. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm not going to do that. All right. Here we go. Another book, Fighting Disease with Food. If someone can tell me the, um, the, the answer for the Kahoot question that I asked earlier, all right? What was the question and the answer that I asked earlier, the test question? You already got a book. I can't give you another one. All right. Anybody remember what the test question was that I gave earlier? I know you got to come. You got to come early. You got to get here early. All right. So everybody, anyone, anyone that was here when I asked the test question, give us the hint. What does it? All right. I'll give it to you. I'll give it to you. What does it mean to be redeemed? That's right. So if you came earlier, you would know the answer for the cahoots. I'm telling you, you got you to gotta show up on time. You got to show up on time. Okay, so I got two, I got a few more books I'm going to give, and then I'm going to give the grand prize. So the first book, uh, I, a, a woman who hasn't received the book yet, all right? A woman who hasn't received the book yet. Okay, I saw, I saw your hand first. I saw your hand first. All right, another woman on this side who hasn't received the book yet. Okay, I got you. I got you. Here you go. All right, my next one is going to be for the men. So, uh, fellas, please prepare to put your hands in the air. All right, here we go, fellas. I need two men who haven't received the book yet. All right, here you go. You got one. You got one. I need another man on this side. See, praise team won all the gifts. Praise team won all the gifts. I need a man on this side who hasn't received the book yet. All right, I got you. You got one? I haven't received one. Oh, okay. He hasn't received one yet, so I got you right here. All right. So I need everybody to clap their hands for this last gift. All right, go ahead. Let me hear you. Let me hear you. Let me hear you. Okay. In my hand is a gas card. All right, gas is expensive nowadays. So the gas card is going to the person that traveled the farthest. This is why I asked you to put your address on your GPS, okay? And that's why I asked you to, you know, do it before I told you what the gift was. So that way you don't put, you know, your auntie in Virginia's address and talking about something I came a long way. Okay? So did you put the address on your GPS? You ready? I need to see, I need to see how many miles. So if you feel, where? You came from work? 
All right, put your address for work. I, I'll take it. I need, I, I want to see the address. I, I want, I want to see the address. I did say from home. I did say from home, but we're allowing, we're allowing some, you know, okay, so let's see how many miles this is. This is, ooh, 29 miles. Ooh, 29 miles. Can you beat that? No, nah, he said, he said, just give it to her. Just give it to her. Okay, I need another one. Anybody can beat 29 miles? How far is your job? Not 29 miles away? You live eight minutes away? Oh, man. Oh, my goodness. That's not how that works. All right. Anybody can beat 29 miles? I, I'm sorry. I can't. I, I, I'm going to give it to, I, I, I'm gonna give it to someone who's a visitor. Okay? So she's, I know. I just changed my mind. I thought somebody would be able to beat you. Okay. So give me somebody else. I need a visitor who, who, who traveled far. Homestead? Oh, that's a, that's a good, that's a good. That's a, you got the mileage? Let me see the mileage. That's an hour? Yeah. But you know they got like North Homestead? I'm, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> she got it. Thank you. <laughs> you're, you're, okay, let me see. What's the mileage? What you got? What you got? Seven miles? Oh, Lord, have mercy. you my neighbor. <laughs> you're my neighbor. Matter of fact, I'm coming to your house tomorrow. We're having dinner. <laughs> what, you got your mileage? Let me see what you got. Ooh, 40 miles. He traveled a long way. All right, can y'all give your hands for 40 miles? Give him a hand for 40 miles. All right. All right, all right. So we got a lot of other gifts. I want to I wanna give away all of our gifts, but we want to respect the time. So listen, make sure you're here tomorrow night because Tuesday night is supposed to be gift night, but I still got some gifts left, so I want to give them out tomorrow. Make sure you're here tomorrow. Bring somebody with you because these books are amazing. The bottles are great, so don't miss out. I think we're going to turn it over to Cahoots. Are we ready? Good evening, everyone. Oh, y'all could do better than that. Good evening, everyone. God is good.
Yes. Jesus, our Redeemer, part one. Three, two, one. Here we go. Okay, in Revelation 12, 12, God warned us about Satan because he's gone down to us. He's furious. Time is short. All of the above, B and C only. B and C will be red and blue, all right? Why did God warn us about Satan coming down? Is it because he's gone down? Okay, here we go. All right, 23. Okay, here we go, here we go. Easy, right? So far, so good? Okay. <laughs> All right. Whenever I think it's a little tricky, the points are doubled. Okay, here we go. Let me see who's on top. Who's on top? Bird. Who's bird? <laughs> Make sure you have the same name every night. If you don't have the same name every night, you're not going to win. Because when I tally it up, uh, yeah, okay, here we go. All right. <laughs> bird. Okay, bird. I see you. Go ahead. Okay, this one is worth double point. Pastor Reuben explicated that Jesus did the first killing. Which of the following verses indicates that? Genesis 3.15, Genesis 3.7, Genesis 3.21, or all of the above? Yes, which verse that that Pastor Reuben used to back that up to say Jesus did the first killing? Is it Genesis 3.15? Is it Genesis 3.27? Or Genesis 3.7? Or is it all of them? All right, here we go. Ah, 13 of you got it right. It was Genesis 3.21. And the points are doubled. Wow, 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 wow. Okay, here we go. Let's see who's on top. All right, okay, okay. K's on top. We have, we have some new players. What's good? What's good? Okay, you warming up? You warming up? Okay. I don't see Steve-O. I don't see Esther. Hey, nobody can cheat on this game. No, it doesn't matter who. It, she got kicked out? How? I don't even know how. I, I, I didn't try, try, try to, but nobody has control of it but me. Yeah. Try, try again. Try again. Try again. Get on. Wow. Oh, I'm so sorry. I'm, no, that's, yeah. Well, just let me know who that, yeah, just use another name, but let me know that's you, okay? Or just put your, you know, the whole something. Exactly. Something like that. Okay, guys. I don't know what's happening, but it's not supposed to happen. Okay, K is number one. Let's go to the next one. True or false, as soon as Adam and Eve sinned, God quickly put a plan together to redeem them. True or false, as soon, I mean no sooner than they sinned, God quickly put a plan together to redeem them. True or false? True or false? True or false? Ah, uh, trick question. Ah, uh -huh. false. Why is it false? There you go. Did you get in, Ann? Oh, praise God. Okay. I, I kind of felt bad. I'm like, I want you to play. All right. Praise God. So 15 of you guys were paying attention. Critical thinking. All right. He didn't quickly just put it together. It was there already. Who's on top? Yeah, okay. Oh, K, K, K came for them tonight. Okay, what is going on? All right, next one, next one, next one. Both Hebrews 9.22 and Leviticus 17.11 indicate that blood must be shed for the forgiveness of sin. Why blood? Life is in the blood. Blood makes atonement for sin. The law requires it. All of the above. Life is in the blood. Blood makes atonement for sin. The law requires it, all of the above. According to Hebrews 29, uh, I mean, Hebrews 9, 22, Leviticus 17, 11. If you were paying attention, that should be a given. All right, here we go. Wow, 20 got it right. All of the above, right? E exactly, right? So I made sure I put that on there. The law requires it, right? It's all of that, okay. Praise God. Let me see who's on top. Who's on top? Oh, Mervlin came on top. 
Mer, you, how you got kicked? Why are people getting kicked out? Oh, I apologize. I apologize. Okay, make, make sure y'all have strong connections, all right? Okay, I apologize. Okay, uh, are you in? Are you in? Are you able to go back in? Here we go. Next. Next. True or false? In Old Testament times, when someone sinned, it was the duty of the priest to kill the lamb for them. In Old Testament times, when someone sinned, it was the priest of the, the it was the duty of the priest to kill the lamb for them. You have to be paying attention. Here we go. 24, I got it right. False. What, why is it false? Because they had to kill it themselves. It's not the priest who, who, who caused Jesus' death. It's all of us. All right. Good, 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 good. See, I'm easy. I'm easy. I'm easy tonight. K, wow. K's not letting up. What happened, uh, uh, Adriana? What's good? <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's a lot of double points tonight, though. I mean, okay, here we go. Next one. Next one. Next one. Double points. Better get that. In, in the old system, which of the following would not have demonstrated salvation by faith? All right? You, 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 you're looking for the one that would not demonstrate salvation by faith. Forgiveness occurred in the action of the killing of the lamb. Forgiveness occurred based on Christ's merits. People still had to believe if Christ had not come, there would be no forgiveness. Which one would not have demonstrated salvation by faith? I know it's, it's hard. I'll give you all a, a whole minute to think about it. i give you the longest time for this one. I know it's a hard question. Yeah. Yeah. That means if that happened, it would have been salvation by works. And I made sure I said it. Yeah. If that one thing happened, you wouldn't need Jesus. Because you just do that and everything is good. That way I spent like at least a good five minutes. That, that here we go. All right. Seven, oh, that's good. I know, I know, I know. 17 of y'all got it, right? So forgiveness did not occur in the action of killing. They still had to believe. It was still on the merits of Christ, right? And if Christ never came, they would have still not been forgiven. Spirit check. That was a good question. So double points for the 17 of y'all. It's anybody's game. It's really anybody's game. Wow, okay. Wow, that's good. Okay, okay. Next one, next one, yeah. Okay. Uh, oh, it's a puzzle. Arrange the behavioral stages in order. Arrange the behavioral stages in order. Which one is first, second, or third? <laughs> move them, move them in order. Yes, the three behavioral stages. Fix them in order. <laughs> I'm having fun with this Cahoots thing, man. <laughs> I'm giving y'all everything. <laughs> it's not switching? <laughs> Your screen. <laughs> All right. What is it? The three behaviors? Your thoughts, your feelings, and your action. You think about it, you feel it, and then you do it. All right, 22 of you. Okay. <laughs> Can nobody touch K tonight? Can nobody touch K? Praise God. Next one, next one. But I see Sarah's coming up, though. Sarah B's coming up. Double points. The fall of Adam meant that, very important, that Satan became the leader of this world. Mankind was legally his. Adam and Eve needed a redeemer. All of the above, none of the above, right? The fall of Adam meant that Satan became the, legal, uh, the leader of this world, who was uh, uh, the, uh, legally the leader of mankind Adam and Eve needed a redeemer all of the above none of the above yeah yeah see I'm giving you a lot of times here we go wow 19 people got it right yes if you know the question that shouldn't bother you <laughs> it's a test it's a test, I know. Don't, don't think you know me, you don't know me. You don't know how I do my questions, okay? Here we go. 
<laughs> it is. I know it's tricky. Yeah. All right, E. E the champ. <laughs> Top five. Sarah B still number two. Here we go. Next one. Next one. Here we go. Nine out of ten. What does redeem mean? Type that, that. Type your answer. You should know that, Daddy. What does redeem mean? K came to win tonight. <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right. I see y'all. I made sure I said it. All right. Minute. Wow. All right, here we go. What? It means to buy back. To buy back. That's what it is. That's what it is. That's right. To buy back. No, 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 no. To buy back. That's the right answer. To buy back. Okay, all right. Okay. What y'all put? Buy back? Okay. All right, all right, all right. Okay, okay, my bad. Yeah. Everybody get it right. <laughs> I said to buy back. That's what I said. I said redeem means to buy back. And I said, I don't want to hear anything else to buy back. All right. Yeah. That's what I said. I said to buy back. But anyway. All right. Okay. Next one. Let me see who's on. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I, I will eliminate that question. I will eliminate it. Okay. Okay. You know what? In, in the... I guess in the type in the typing ones, I gotta put at least two or three different ones. Cause I, I didn't think y'all were gonna put buy back. I just whatever. Okay, let's go to the next one. Next one, next one, next one. Last one. Type your answer. Theologians call the garden promise in Genesis 315 proto evangelium. What does proto mean? Easy. What does proto mean? What does proto mean? I gave y'all both of the answers. It's two. I, yeah, I, 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 it's, it's either or. It's either or. I apologize on the buyback. back. I, 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 all right, here we go. Here we go. Here we go. No one. First or before. All right. That's right. That's the gospel before the gospel, the first good news. All right. Let's see who's, on who's number three. Number three. Oh, that is number three. Okay, okay. That's, that's number two. And number one is Miss K. All right. All right. I hope you were blessed. I'm sorry. <laughs> Until I see you again, may God bless you. Oh, man, everybody's real good sounding so sad. What a cahoot. <laughs> <laughs> hey, shout out to Kay for getting first place. Come on, Kay. I know. All she right, Caritha's been job. studying. And, and, her, and her ride or die got second place. Shout out to Esther. But you know what, Dada, one thing, you uh -huh. gave the answer out. I did give the answer. You gave the answer what it was. It was um, to, to buy, buy back. back. And I said that in the pre-show. Listen, if you're not tuning in to the pre-show, I'm sorry for you. We're giving out test questions for you, <laughs> for you to win these prizes, all right? We want everybody to win a TV and then donate it to me. All right, so, you know... <laughs> We're having such a great time over here um, playing cahoots and worshiping. I think it's time for us to send it over to the praise team so that we can worship together. That's right. That's right. That's right. So, hey, everybody, let's worship together. And you already know, it's all about Jesus. Jesus. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Good evening, church. Uh, are we all happy to be in the house of the Lord today? Amen. I'm going to invite you guys to please stand with us as we worship our Lord, our King, tonight. Amen. Our first song is titled, Shout to the Lord.
let's continue to worship in the house of the Lord. Continue to lay down all our burdens, all our fears, all our doubts at the altar. You were the word at the beginning, one with God, the Lord most high. Your hidden glory and creation now revealed in you are Christ. What a beautiful
Jesus tonight. Come on, everybody. Come on, come on, come on. Invite the Spirit of God in here tonight. Come on. Come on, let's call on the name of Jesus. Let's invite the Holy Spirit. Let's crown Jesus now, the powerful name of Jesus. It's all about who? Come on, come on. It's all about who? Jesus, please remain standing and pick up your sword. Pick up your sword. Pick up your Bible. However you carry your Bible, whether digitally, whether paperback, whether hardback. Come on, pick up your Bible. If it's your iPad, go ahead. Go ahead, go ahead. Let's make our statement of declaration. Let's go ahead and let the whole world know. Let the whole world know. Here we go, here we go. This is my spiritual sword that God has given me to fight the spiritual fight that I'm in. What it tells me to do is what I'll do. Where it tells me to go is where I'll go. What it says I am is what I believe. I will search it, I will know it, I will use it, and with it, I will gain a victory. In Jesus' name, what do you say? I want to speak to you briefly tonight under the sermonic title, Jesus, our Redeemer, part two. Let's pray. Let's pray. If we ever needed you before, we sure do need you now. Please shower new generation with another portion of your Holy Spirit, oh God. I pray, oh God, that you will make our hearts receptive. Whew, praise Jesus. I feel the power of God in the room tonight. Hallelujah. Give God some praise. Give God some praise. Hallelujah. Praise be the trees. Oh, thank you, God. Oh, thank you, God. We lift up your name, oh, Father, for there is none like you. We thank you for redeeming, for redeeming us from sin. And we know sin doesn't have a grip on us anymore. Yes, 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 the, the enemy has lost all of us because we belong to you now and forever. We love you. We cannot wait to see you. In Jesus' name I pray. Let everybody say amen, amen. Amen. Praise be to God. Praise be to God. I want to invite you to, to invite a few friends with you. If you have not done so, let them know that the word of God is about to be proclaimed right here in this place. If you have a friend you know that needs it, come on. Let them know. Let them know. Share with them. And if you yourself, you're in the room and you have not yet subscribed, or if you have subscribed but yet you have not put your notification on, do that now. Do that now. Make sure you have your notification on because we want to, to make sure that whatever we're doing, you are included. So invite your friends. Let them know that the word of God is being preached with boldness in this place. Spirit check. Last night, we, 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 we discussed how every Old Testament sacrifice was pointing out to Jesus' ultimate sacrifice on the cross. I remember that? Test questions. So in this section right here, many test questions are going to come out of this right here. So, so pay attention off the bat. Pay attention. And if you need me to repeat some, go ahead and tell me. But, but pay attention right here. You see, the old sacrificial system represented the old covenant. Mm -hmm. and, and, and so the sacrifice of Christ on the cross represents the new covenant. Spirit check. The old covenant was a type. Type, what is a type? A symbol. Right, right? And the new covenant is an anti-type, right? Or anti-type, right? That's the real thing. The, the, the old covenant was a shadow of things to come. And Jesus came and made it real. Spirit check somebody. In the old covenant, lambs were killed every single day. In the new covenant, Jesus, the Lamb of God, one lamb was slain once and for all. Spirit check somebody. Are, are, you, are you getting the contrast so far? We, we also talk about how hard Satan worked to stop Jesus from being born. Mm-hmm. He stopped, he was trying to, to, to stop Jesus from coming the first time. He's still trying to stop Jesus from coming the second time. 
And, and that's why before Jesus comes the second time, he will impersonate Jesus. And he will have a fake second coming. That's why Jesus says, if you hear that say, here I am, here is the son of man. Here he is in the wilderness, do not go. Here he is in China, do not go. In Africa, because when the son of God is returning, every eye shall see Jesus. Come on, somebody. And so watch this, watch this. From the beginning, Satan did not want Christ to come because he knew once Christ came, game over. He knew Jesus was our only hope. My God, watch this, watch this, watch this. Abel was supposed to be the line of righteousness from whence Jesus would come from. So what happened? The devil made Cain kill Abel. That was already the first step, the first step that Satan took from, from, uh, 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 from allowing or from the stuff to stop Jesus from coming was killing Abel. What was the first step? Well, killing Abel. He stopped the line of righteousness. Watch this. Watch this. God always has plan B. Cain killed Abel. God gave Abel another one called Seth. And so now we have another line of righteousness because Jesus has to be born. Come on, somebody. Watch this, watch this, watch this. Now, Satan stirred the hearts of the people in the uh, uh, antediluvian time. That's a big word, antediluvian. Anti means before and diluvian has to do with deluge, right, or the flood. So antediluvian means the people, like before the flood, right? If I say the antediluvian people are the people who live before the flood. Spirit check. Watch this. Listen to this. And so in Genesis chapter 6, the sons of Seth mingle, intermarried the sons of Cain. The line of righteousness was not supposed to be intertwined with the line of wickedness. And so the sons of Seth saw the daughters of Cain, that they were beautiful, married them. And these people became the overly wicked people that God had to destroy. There is no, uh, uh, there, there, there is no connection between light and darkness. Spirit check somebody. You're getting it now. You're getting it now, right? Some people think that it was, I used to think that when I was younger, I used to think that the angels married the humans. No, brothers and sisters, watch this. Angels are asexual. They cannot reproduce. Otherwise, you would have multiple billions and billions of angels. And so, so the amount of angels there were in the beginning is the same amount there is now. Spirit check somebody. Watch this. Even the angels who rebel against God, God had not destroyed them yet. He's saving them for the last day for judgment. Spirit check somebody. And that's why Ephesians 6 says we're not fighting against flesh and blood, but against uh, uh, spirits of darkness, principalities. They're everywhere. They're in the air. They're in the waters. They're right. They're, they're, they're lurking around, uh, around us right now. But they cannot come in here in Jesus' name. Come on, somebody. When somebody come with an evil spirit in him in the, in, the, in the holy place of God, we cast them out in the name of Jesus. And that's why I want to tell people, if you have a generational curse, let's say your parents, your, your parents, uh, a spirit, right, uh, 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 claimed you. I, I want you to know that once you go under this water right there, all right, the baptismal pool, uh, uh, whatever generational curse you had before, it would break, has been lifted in Jesus' name. Come on, somebody. Watch this. And so now, watch this. Now, those people were so wicked that God said, I'm going to destroy all of them. But then the human race was spared by Noah. You, you, see, you see the pattern? You see how God is doing it? You see how God is doing it? And so watch this. He's still sparing them, right? Now, God raised Abraham. Abraham to, 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 to create or, or uh, to, to, uh, 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 to create the Israelites. Abraham was the father of the Israelites. This is God still making a way for Jesus to come. So let me check somebody. Fast forward now. The, the, the Israelites went down to Egypt. What, what did Pharaoh do? Pharaoh said, I'm going to kill all 
the male boys. My God, this is Satan still trying to stop Jesus from coming. A lot of stuff happened in between. I don't have time to tell you all, but let's fast forward to our time. A.D. Anybody know what A.D. stands for? Test question. Anio Domini. Anio Domini, which means the year of the Lord. So before Christ came, it was B.C., before Christ. And now it's Anio Domini, our time. Spirit, check somebody. So in our time, we heard of a king called King Herod. Spirit, check. When, when King Herod heard that Jesus might have been born. What did he do? He says, I'm going to kill all the boys three and under. There was still Satan trying to stop Jesus from coming. Spirit check somebody. But I've got news for you. Satan can try all he wants, but he can never frustrate God's plan. Come on, somebody. Jesus will always prevail. Come on, somebody. Spirit check. He can try all he wants. He can kill as many babies as he wants. If God says Jesus is coming, Jesus is coming. And tonight I came by to tell somebody the same Jesus who was from the beginning, the same power he had, he has it now, he always going to have it. If he was faithful in the beginning, he's faithful now, and he will be faithful in the end. What do you say, church? Oh, I'm glad to tell you, at the appointed time, even though Satan tried, Gabriel came to Joseph, and Gabriel broke the big news. Gabriel told Joseph in Matthew 121, Gabriel told Joseph, she, your, your wife, Mary, will bear a son. Let's read with me. And you shall call his name. My God, Jesus. Why Jesus? For he will save his people. From their sins. What verse is that? Matthew 1, 21. We learned this verse in Pathfinder a long time ago. She will bear a son, and you shall call his name who? Come on, come on. You shall call his name who? For he will save his people from their sins. My God. You see, when Jesus was ready to begin his ministry, he came to his cousin, John the Baptist. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Who was John the Baptist to Jesus? His cousin. I want you to learn his little things right there. Know who he was, right? And then Jesus said, I came to be baptized. And then when John the Baptist saw Jesus, he said, Behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. John 1, 29. Mark that verse down. John 1, 29. What did the, John the Baptist say? Behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin sin of the world why did he not say sins of the world why did he say sin you notice it says sin singular uh-huh uh -huh. you see this is not talking about sins the, the sins that we commit why because there's still sins in the world right but this right here is talking about the penalty and the curse of sin come on somebody test question right there we said the well, the sin. We were born with a sinful nature. Jesus came and he cancels out our sinful nature. Those who believe in him by faith, you put on the righteousness of Christ. So we check somebody. And watch this. And in so doing, Jesus reversed the curse. I don't think y'all heard me. I said Jesus reversed the curse. And now there is no condemnation. For those who are in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. My God. We read in Romans 6, 23, which says, For the wages of sin is what, everybody? The wages of sin is death. That's the legal penalty of sin. The legal penalty, the law requires that if you sin, you die. Spirit check somebody. Listen to this. But this death that is being talked about in Romans 6, 23, is not the natural death that we die from when we get sick or when we get old and we die. No, no, no. That's a different kind of death. The, the way, okay, watch this, watch this. Test question. Watch this, watch this. The natural death that we undergo when we get sick and die is not the wages of sin. It's a side effect of sin. Spirit check somebody. 
Yeah, 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 yeah. The natural death that we undergo when we get sick or when we get old and we get into an accident, we die, is just a side effect of sin. Why? Because after this death, we're still going to wake up and face judgment. It is the death after the second death. That's the wage of sin. That's the death you never wake up from. That's the death that Jesus died. And watch this, watch this, watch this. Listen, watch this. Anybody who dies without Christ, that's the kind of death you headed to. You headed to the death of hell and you will never, ever wake back up from that again. I pray this is not the fate of anyone here. Have mercy on us, God. But listen to me and listen to me good. Read my lips if you have to. All of us who believe in Jesus, who accept him as our Lord and Savior, who obey his word until the end, will never, ever experience the death of hell. None of us. Why? Because Jesus redeemed us. He paid the price. He paid the price for hell. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Somebody shout hallelujah. Say praise the Lord. Come on, come on. Say thank you, Jesus. Watch this. Watch this. Jesus. Ooh. I'm going to talk about that some more later, but let me not get in it. But, but, but i tell you something. You need to understand what Jesus did for you. And when we say come accept Jesus, you'd be a fool to not run to the altar and accept Jesus for free. Tomorrow night, we're going to begin to, the, well, not tomorrow night, tomorrow night's Wednesday? Okay, yeah, we're going to begin to talk about the, the depth of what, my God, Jesus is all we've got, folks. Without him, we're nothing. Without him, we're doomed. As Ella, uh, uh, Brother Richard always says, uh, outside of Jesus, nothing makes sense. My God, watch this. Uh, now, now, watch this. Even though this is great news, this is the best news ever, that we will not die the death of hell. But there is a little bonus I want to point out to you tonight. Say, I want the bonus, Pastor. Here it is. Watch this. Watch this. Here it is. Here it is. Jesus didn't simply come to save us from death or the legal penalty of sin, but Jesus came to give us a life worth living. Did somebody receive that? Did somebody receive that? Yeah, 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 yeah. Jesus came to give us a life worth living. He is our glorious hope. Does anybody love Jesus tonight? My God. My God. Clap your hand. You know, you know I'm going to make you do it every night we gotta we gotta praise him every night my god watch this what are you talking about pastor well let, let me let, let the bible answer let, let the bible an, answer instead of me watch this second corinthians 5 21 second corinthians 5 21 watch this watch how jesus reversed the curse in every aspect of the word it's not just the legal penalty but everything else watch this right second corinthians 5 21 says god made him uh-huh who had no sin to be sin for us so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. I don't know if you realize this is a swap. This is a barter right there. It's a barter, right? God, came, God, God took the death. He gave us life, right? And so now we take on, God took on our, our, uh, uh, our state. And he is swapping for his state. Come on, somebody. But now watch this. How is this possible? How could Jesus become sin when Jesus was not sinful? You remember last night when I said the, the sinner confessed their sin on the animal. Did the animal become a sinner right then and there? Or uh, did, the, did, the, did the animal become a sinner? A sinner? No, symbolically. Spirit check. 
It was transferred spiritually, but not physically. Spirit check. Now watch this. Watch this. In order for you to understand this clearly, you have to understand these two chemical phenomena, right? Absorption and adsorption. Spirit check. Absorption and adsorption. A, B, and A, D. Absorption is when two materials or more, right, chemically combine. They become one. For example, you put sugar in the water, it becomes sh sugar water, right? Sweet water. Haitians love, love sugar water. They call it glossic. Glossic à pain. Aïe! Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm going to tell them my wife. My wife said when she was little, that's all she ate. Just, just low sick and pain. She just loved that. Every time you drink it, you want more. Every time you drink it, you want more. It's that sugar. It's addictive, right? Oh, God save us. <laughs> right? And so now when you dissolve salt in water, it becomes salt water. Spirit check. Now watch this. That's absorption. The, 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 uh, 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 the liquid absorb what you put in there. You get it? So they become one. They become one property. Spirit check. Now, adsorption, say, say adsorption. Adsorption is when one material sticks to the surface of another. They become one item, but not one property. Spirit check. For example, or it's when, okay, adsorption is when uh, one material sticks on the surface of the other. They become one item, but not one property. Watch this, watch this. For example, if you got poisoned by mistake and you ingest activated charcoal, now the activated charcoal serves as a magnet. It looks for the poison in your body and grabs onto it and drives it out. But, but the charcoal never becomes a poison. Spirit check somebody. So, so in the same way, Jesus did not become sin by absorption. He became sin by adsorption. Come on, somebody. That means Jesus was never sinful. My God. But like a magnet, he pulled sin away from our lives and set us free. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. My God. Watch this. So whatever sin did, Jesus undid. Jesus reversed the curse. Spirit check somebody. In other words, if you want to be practical with it, because Jesus is light, his light drives the darkness away in our life. Spirit check somebody. Because Jesus is pure, when you really encounter Jesus, you are disgusted by impurity. Spirit check somebody. Because Jesus is wisdom, even though you don't have a doctorate degree, you become wiser than somebody who has a doctorate degree who don't know Christ. Spirit check somebody. Because once we know him, he drives whatever is not of him away from us without he himself being affected. My God, I wish somebody came to celebrate Jesus tonight. Come on, somebody. He who knew no sin became sin for us so that we might become the righteousness of God. Somebody shout hallelujah. My God, the word righteousness, the word righteousness is Dikaiosune in, in Greek. What is the word? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not Latin, it's Greek. Spirit check. What is the word? Dikaiosune. What, what does that mean? It means approve, the approval of God, or what is approved in his eyes. You know, brother, since when you become, when you have a state of righteousness, you are in the proper state that you ought to be. Spirit check somebody. It, it, the righteousness is the condition that is acceptable to God. In other words, outside of Christ, our Redeemer, we are unacceptable to God. Spirit check somebody. Away from Christ, we are doomed and there is no possible way to be redeemed. One condition is to go to hell. My God. Outside of Christ, our Redeemer, there is no hope of eternal life. Outside of Christ, we can never become acceptable to God. But in Christ, we are fitted for heaven. Come on, somebody. In Christ, we get to go to heaven. 
My God. And that's why when, 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 when John 14, 1 through 3 says, let not your heart be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. I will go to prepare a place for you. What does that mean? What does that mean Jesus won't go to prepare a place for us? Well, some people say he was a carpenter. Is Jesus building right now? <laughs> no, the mansion is already built from the beginning. Amen. And then Jesus don't have to physically build. He can just speak it. It happened, right? By the way, there won't be any, you know why there won't be any woods in heaven? Because there will be no killing in heaven. To have woods, you got to kill a tree. There will be no killing. Come on, somebody. All right? Every, that's why it's going to be metals. It's going to be minerals. It's going to be gold. Streets of gold. Come on, somebody. Pure water. So watch this. When he says Jesus goes to prepare a place for us, what he... Can anybody tell me what is Jesus doing in heaven right now? The Bible says he is interceding for us. In other words, Jesus is giving us, is still working on giving us the rights to, make, to go to heaven. In other words, Jesus died. We're still going astray from him. And Jesus is praying and still begging. God, God give him one more chance. God, give him one more chance. He's still about us. He's still pulling us. He's still pulling our ears. He's speaking to you through vision. He's speaking through to somebody, through your kids, through life, through accidents, through whatever. And he said, Jesus said, keep coming, keep coming. Keep. He could have just said, I, I died and I'm, I'm done. But he keeps at it. He's given us the right to become citizens of heaven. But at some point in time, if you keep rejecting him, it's going to be over. Spirit, check somebody. My God. So Christ is the reason that when we pray, heaven comes down to us. My God. Christ is the reason that when we call on God, he answers. He makes us acceptable to God. Without Christ, it doesn't matter how beautiful you are. It doesn't matter how many degrees you have, how much money you have, how clean you are. You're still dirty before God. Because our utmost righteousness is like filthy rags before God. Spirit check somebody. Watch this, watch this, watch this. Jesus did not come for us to just be saved from death. But Jesus came to give us a life worth living. Watch this, watch this. We, 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 we're going down, we're landing now, we're landing now. Watch this. Isaiah 53, 5 says, Because Christ came, I can have true healing. If Jesus didn't come, we would never be healed from our diseases. And watch this. You can say, well, how come people who don't know Jesus still get healed? Watch this. Jesus says, I make the, my rain shine on the just and on the unjust so that they might know how merciful I am to them that would come to me. Come on, somebody. Watch this. The, the Isaiah 53, 5 says, but he was... Let's go. He was pierced for our transgression. He was crushed for our iniquity. Upon him was the chastisement that brought us peace. And with his wounds, we are healed. Come on, somebody. Let me see the ones who want to claim their healing tonight in the name of Jesus. Some of you, it's because you haven't accepted him yet fully. That's why you're still sick in your body. Some of you, 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 you're okay in your body, but your spirit is sick. Come on, somebody. So, some of you, you're mentally sick. Some of you, you spirit, all of us are spiritually sick. Come on, claim your healing in Jesus' name. Tonight, I came to tell somebody, because Christ is your redeemer, we can experience abundant life in Jesus. Come on, somebody. A lot of people think that because we are Christian, we should not live well. No, in fact, if we did what God told us to do, we, did, we were not one foot in, one foot out. Our life would have been an example of the abundance there is in Jesus. People would have come and see and taste and see the Lord our God is good. Come on, somebody. My God, he says, the thief comes only to steal and to kill and to destroy. I came that they may have life and have it how? Abundantly. Come on, somebody. Say, God, I want that abundant life. Come on, come on. Come on, come on. 
Well, apart from God, this would never be possible at all. But Jesus came. Watch this. Watch this. By abundantly, it does not say luxurious life and live in the high rise and the condos and have material possessions. No, 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 no. The Greek word here is, is, is uh, uh, teresos. Teresos, which means all around access. Abundant life means all around access. In other words, if you are in Christ, no matter how bad it seems, you will always have above and beyond what you need, the necessity that you need to survive. Come on, somebody. In other words, be not dismayed. Whatever be tired. Come on, and God will take care of you beneath his wings of love abide. God will take care of you. All you may need, he will provide. God will take care of you of you nothing you ask will be denied for god will take care of you hallelujah watch this watch this because so 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 watch this the word abundant life means all around access because jesus is our redeemer we have access to joy anybody need some joy tonight in their life anybody every time you're in a situation you can't even smile you can't even smile at your kids. You can't even smile at your spouse. Why? Because things are so messed up in your life. Tonight, I want you to take Jesus as your joy. Watch this. Watch this. In the text, it's not talking about happiness, even though joy includes happiness. But it's not limited to happiness. Why? Because happiness is based on circumstances and moods. If you're in a good mood, you're happy. If your circumstances are right, you're happy. But the Greek word here is kara. What's the Greek word? It means grace recognized or the awareness of grace. Watch this. When you have joy in your heart, watch this. Your gladness is not based on your circumstances, but your gladness is based on the awareness that no matter what you're going through, you're still basking in God's grace. And through it all, God's grace is sufficient for your life. So we check somebody. That's real joy. Even if you lose a loved one, if you're in Christ, you can still experience real joy. Why? Because you have the hope of eternal life. Come on, somebody. Because of Jesus, you can have peace. John 16 verse 33 says, These things I have spoken to you so that in me, so that in, in who? In Jesus, you may have peace in the world. You may have tribulation, but take courage. I have overcome the world. Spirit check somebody. This peace I'm talking about here is the state of tranquility without fear that comes what may. Once you have Christ, even if you are in the worst situation, like Horatio Spafford, you will say, when peace like a river attendeth my way, when sorrows like sea billows roll, whatever my lot, thou hast taught me to say, it is well with my soul. That's peace in Jesus. There are so many of us now, we can't even pay our bills, but we have peace in Jesus. We don't know where the mortgage money is going to come from, but we have peace in Jesus. Come on, somebody. It is because Jesus is our redeemer. Oh, because of Jesus, we have eternal life. Come on, somebody. Because of Jesus, we have eternal life. Romans 6, 23 says, For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal. In other words, God didn't just save us from death, but he also gave us eternal life. Watch this. Grace is God giving us what we don't deserve. Mercy is is God not giving us what we do deserve? Spirit check somebody. Grace is give, God giving us what we don't deserve. Mercy is God not giving us what we do deserve. In other words, we deserve hell, but instead, he has mercy on us. He gave us heaven instead. My God, my God, my God. Watch this very quickly. There's a story of a young boy who had a little boat. A little toy that he loved. His father made a toy for, for him. And one day, there was a flood in the area. The little boat got drifted away. And then after the, uh, 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 sometime after, he passed by a store, a local store. He saw that little boat right there. My God. 
He says, wow, that's my boat. He knew the boat. So he went inside. He asked the owner, please, can I have my boat back? The owner said, you know what? I wish I could give it to you. But now he said, my story is mine now. If you want it, you got to pay for it. The little boy didn't even negotiate the price. He said, how much? He told him the price. He just ran back to his daddy. He broke his piggy bank. He asked for money. And then he came back and said, here is your money. Give me my boat. And then when he got the boat, he was looking at the boat. He was playing with the boat. He says, now you mine twice. Now you mine twice. Not only my daddy made you, but now I bought you. And you mine twice. That sounds like somebody I know. Jesus made us, but we went to Satan. Satan thought he legally had us. Jesus says, I will pay the price. Jesus paid for your eternal life. Jesus paid for your healing. Jesus paid for your peace. Jesus paid for your grace. Jesus paid for your abundant life. Come on, somebody. Jesus paid for your victory. Now we are his twice by way of creation and by way of redemption. And soon and very soon, brothers and sisters, Jesus would not leave you on this earth to perish, but he will take us home with him to live with him forevermore. Spirit check somebody. Hallelujah. If you're glad you are redeemed by Jesus tonight, run to the altar. Let's celebrate Jesus tonight. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. We are going to sing, redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. Redeem by the blood of the Lamb. If you're redeemed, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. Even if your, your classmates or your friends may talk about you, but you have something they don't have. You have eternal life waiting for you. Hallelujah! Everybody, everybody, come celebrate Jesus. Yes, redeem. Redeem how I love to proclaim it. Redeem by the... I wish I would help me sing. Redeem. And let mercy is child forever. I, I'm redeemed, 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 redeemed. Hallelujah. Redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. Redeemed, redeemed. that they're his child forever. Come on, somebody. Let me see the hands of those who want to accept him tonight as their redeemer. Those who want to be baptized in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. They say, you know what? All these people are rejoicing, but me, I'm not baptized yet. Or I left God, but I want to come back so that God can save me in his kingdom. Let me see those who want God to be their redeemer so they can have the same hope we all have. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Those of you who want to be baptized, those of you who want to be baptized, I, I know some of you already. Any new one, any new one, any new person, a new young person. Hallelujah. 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 God will reverse the curse. 
God will reverse the curse. God will save you in his kingdom. Anybody else? If online you would like to say, I want Jesus to be my redeemer. I want to serve him. I want you to put on the chat. Put your information on the chat so that we can know how to get in contact with you. Oh yeah, we have some new people. Come on, clap your hands for Jesus. Clap your hands for Jesus. Clap your hands for Jesus. Clap your hands. Hallelujah. It is time to accept Jesus. You can only be redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. Jesus didn't purchase you with gold or silver. He gave his life for you. How can you say no to such a love? Let us pray. Thank you, God, for redeeming us. Thank you for buying us back, oh God. Even when we wandered away from you, God, your love still pursued us, oh God. You still went in the murk. You still went in the mire. And you came and rescued us from our filthy sin. And so God, tonight we want to say thank you for those who have already made their calling and election sure by receiving you as the Redeemer. But tonight, oh God, I want to thank you especially for those tonight who made that decision anew, oh God. Whether for the first time or whether they want to be rebaptized, I bless your name. You say you will never reject those who come to you. So I want to thank you already for receiving these newcomers into the kingdom of God. And I pray, oh God, from tonight on that we'll never look back. Oh God, I pray in the name of Jesus, those who need to make that decision, oh God. Don't let them get too far. They don't make it, so it's too late. But I pray in the name of Jesus, before this crusade is over, why not even tonight, oh God? Help them to make up their mind. Because there is no hope outside of Jesus. We love you, God, for loving us so much. We cannot wait to see your face. Come back soon, Lord Jesus. Thank you for what you've done. Thank you for what you're doing. Thank you for what you will continue to do. Thank you for cleansing our soul. Thank you for giving our sins. Thank you for erasing our shame. We love you. In Jesus' name I pray. Let everybody say. And I pray, bless us indeed and enlarge our territory. Keep us from sin that we may be free from pain. And in the end, may your will alone be done in each of our lives. Nothing more, nothing less, and nothing else. In the matchless name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Let everybody say amen, amen, and amen. Clap your hands for Jesus. Come on, come on. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. We are so glad that Jesus is moving in this place. And we thank you for coming every night. We, we thank you for watching online. And I pray that you will continue to watch and continue to come. Because until I see you, may God bless you real good. woo Man, oh man, oh man. What a message tonight. It was amazing. That was amazing yes, for it was. real. Yes, it was. Listen, Pastor brought the word tonight, and you can feel the passion and the power tonight if you were in the building. For those of you who were not here, I feel so sorry for you, and you're watching online. Listen, it is a completely different experience when you are in the house of the Lord. That's right. I also got to say that if you came here tonight and you didn't bring somebody with you, oh my goodness, what are they missing out on? You are missing out of it. Make sure you bring somebody with you tonight or tomorrow night because tomorrow night oh my goodness it's going to be amazing yes Woo. listen it is imperative that each one of you bring someone your That's sister right. your cousin yeah your brother your neighbor knock on somebody's door yeah you never know who life you are changing yeah. and let me tell you god is putting a star on your crown that's right come on you guys yeah, that's right. You know, usually on Wednesday night, we have midweek charge, charge. Correct. Yeah, but tomorrow we won't be having midweek charge. We're going to continue with this revival of all about Jesus. That's Look, right. I'm looking forward to tomorrow night. There were so many gems. Listen, I was thinking, okay, what can I talk about? But there's just too much to talk about. Right. Antediluvian, the flood, you know, absorption, absorption, you know, Cain, uh, King Herod. There's just too much. There was so many gems tonight. Listen, you got to make it here tomorrow night. It's been such a blessing. The praise team killed it again. Yes. And tomorrow, you know, make sure if you were here tonight or, or if you even at home, make sure you, you know, you watch it again. Take some notes so that tomorrow during the cahoots, you know, you, you can be in the top three <laughs> like right, me. Right. You know what I mean? It
And remember, Jesus is all we got. Yeah. So when you feel lonely, you feel like no one is answering, no one can understand That's what you're right. going through. Oh. Always remember, yes. Jesus is here, yes. and he is the person that can answer Amen. all your questions. Girl, is that you better, right? You better preach. I know that's right. I know that's right. <laughs> hey, listen, uh, we had a great time tonight. We're going to be signing off, and you already know it's all about Jesus. Jesus. God bless you. Thank you so much for joining us. We pray that this worship experience transformed your soul, refreshed your hearts, and renewed your spirit. New Generation is a multicultural church that loves God and loves people. It is our desire that you have a life-changing encounter with the creator of the universe. We are located at 12800 North Miami Avenue in the beautiful city of North Miami, Florida. Please feel free to interact with us on our social media platforms. Like us on Facebook, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and follow us on Instagram. Thank you for joining us. Please join us next time for another worship experience.